Today on Aqua Kids. The Aqua Kids join scientists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to see the work being done to bring back the American eel population in the Susquehanna River. Aqua Kids, Aqua Kids, doing what we have to do, saving our Earthland guarantee. All we gotta do is keep it green and blue. I'm Hannah Jones. Today on Aqua Kids, we're at the Conowingo Dam on the Susquehanna River here in Maryland. Hi, kids. Hey. Hi. One thing I know about this place is that electricity is generated here. We're going to learn about the things in the water here. That's right. Electricity is generated, and there's an abundance of life in this river, including eels. Ew. Eels? Aren't those, like, snakes? No, not snakes. An American eel is actually a fascinating fish, and it goes on an incredible journey. Eels on a journey. Let's go find out more about that journey. All right. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hey, Aqua Kids. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having us. So tell us about what you're doing here. We're collecting American eels that are migrating upstream into the Susquehanna River watershed. Where are they coming from that they're migrating up? These eels originated in the Sargasso Sea where they were born. They migrated through the Atlantic Ocean to the coast of Maryland, swam all the way up the Chesapeake Bay to the Susquehanna River. And now that they've swum up here, there's four main stem dams that are blocking their migration. So we're trying to collect them and we're transporting them around the dam so that they can resume their migration to live up in freshwater habitats in the, in the Susquehanna River. Sargasso Sea? Where is that? The Sargasso Sea is in the Atlantic Ocean. So eels obviously can't get over the dam here, so how do they do it? What we do is we trickle water down this riprap into a, sh into a base of a chute. They climb up landscaping cloth in that chute and then they fall into a collection box and then we can count them out of the collection box, put them in holding tanks until we have enough eels to transport around the four main stem dams. A fish climbing? Can you show me where they do it? Sure, why don't we go down and look? All right. Drew, this is where it all happens. See, we're running water down this riprap and the eels actually climb up the spaces in the rocks to the base of our chute. And then they climb up the landscaping cloth all the way to the top. And when they get to the top, they fall into that collection box so that we, we can count them and move them into our holding, holding tank. How do they possibly do it? Because they're just an amazing fish. I mean, there's no other fish that can climb all the way up here uh, to, uh, you know, into our collection device. So why have a system just for eels? Why can't they go up with the other fish? The, the other ladders were built for shad and river herring. They move upstream as adults in the springtime. Mm -hmm. American eels are moving upstream as juveniles during the summertime after the anadromous runs for shad and river herring are over. Uh, the other issue is the shad ladders are operated during the daytime. They have really fast water flow through them and the juvenile eels just can't swim in to that high flow and, and the eels move upstream at nighttime, not during the day. Yeah. So can we see any eels right now? Yeah, let's go up and I'll show you the collection tank. Cool. Now it's time for Aqua Quiz with your host, Drew Cruz. Yeah, the music video is out. Check it out. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm your host, Drew Cruz, and now it's time to test your knowledge with Aqua Quiz. The American eel can be found from Greenland to Brazil, but they start their lives in the Sargasso Sea, a unique section of the North Atlantic Ocean bordered entirely by ocean currents. The eels migrate into fresh and brackish water to mature, and then return to the sea to spawn and then die. Does this behavior make them A, anadromous, or B, catadromous? I'll have the slimy answer after the break. <laughs> Get it? Slimy? Eel? <laughs> Who writes this stuff? More with eels when Aqua Kids return. Welcome back. Did you get the answer? It's B, catadromous. American eels are the only catadromous fish in North America. The term catadromous refers to fish born in the ocean that mature in fresh water, then return to the ocean to spawn. I'll see you next week with another Aqua Quiz. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Wow, can you believe these eels? I know, who knew they could do all that stuff? Hey, hey. so what have we learned about the eel journey so far? Eels are fish, not snakes. This facility transports thousands of eels above the dam each day. And they can climb. And they make an incredible trip from the Sargasso Sea. Well, let's go check out some eels right now. All right. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, guys. We came to see some eels. Well, you came to the right spot. We've got a bunch in here. 
Wow. How many are in there? Uh, right now we've got about 3,500 or so. What's the most yields you've ever had in here? In this tank, we hold 16,000. Wow. Is this as big as they get? No, the adults get much larger. These are just the juveniles. Wow. And there's actually two sure. stages of them. Uh, the first stage of a juvenile eel is called a glass eel, and they're clear, and they're a lot smaller. And then as they make their way upstream, the next stage is the elver, and that's what we have here, are a bunch of different elvers. And you can see different size classes in here. You have some smaller ones, and then uh, some much larger ones that maybe are another year older. How big do they get? Uh, the ones that the adults can get a couple feet. Wow. How do you work with them if they're so slippery? Well, we actually just started a new clinical trial with a new drug called Aquies 20E for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It helps slow down their physical activity by slowing down their metabolic rate, and it also reduces stress on them. But does it hurt them? It doesn't. It actually has a really wide margin of safety, and the fish show a super fast recovery time with them, so much so that as soon as we're done using it, uh, using it to sedate them, we can release them to the wild immediately. So where do the eels go after this? After this, we put them in a stocking truck and we deliver them upstream from here. At this specific location, we have four dams in the river that the eels need to get past. So we'll take them from here, from those holding tanks, and we'll move them directly upstream. Wow, so you move them manually. Yep. Cool. It's like an eel taxi service. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Mm -hmm. How can you possibly measure how many eels you have here? Well, every day when we get here, we check our collection tank where they come up the ladder and they fall in. And what we'll do is we'll net out a bunch of the eels and we put them in these containers that have different volumes on them. And then we'll use that drug and sedate them. And that way, once they're sedated, we're able to actually count how many are in this container. And it makes it a lot easier for us to handle them. And then once we know how many are in this container, we can apply that measurement to the rest of the holding tank. Wow. Okay, so we've learned quite a lot. Do you have any other questions? Yes. Is it important where you put these guys when you take them upstream? Absolutely. So as we catch them here, if we were just to release them right here into the river, they'd be back downstream of the dam, which defeats the point of getting them past it. So we actually transport them 50 miles upstream past all the dams in their way. We'll be back with more from Aqua Kids. Controlling the world's oceans since before the dinosaurs, sharks come in over 400 different species. They range in size from only 8 inches to nearly 50 feet. These animals have extremely sharp senses yet grow and breed slowly, producing very few young. Sharks go after the sick, dead, and injured animals, keeping prey populations healthy and in check. They are part of nature's cleanup crew. It is estimated that 100 million sharks are killed each year, many from bad fishing practices like longlining or trawling, but most are killed for their fins to make shark fin soup, an expensive, trendy food. Find out ways you can help sharks and other apex predators on our website. Hey everyone, don't go away. Later in the show is Drew's new music video. Hi, Hannah here. For more information on today's show, go to aquakids.tv. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. The eels are about to take a trip upstream. So, Jem, what's going on here? Well, right now we just pulled the drains from our tanks up there and we're flushing them out so all the eels are going to come out. And so we're using these mesh bags to catch them in. As soon as we're done and the tank is completely empty, we'll have all the eels contained in these bags and then we can move them right into our stocking truck. Man, all of them? All of them. Wow. They flush right out. That's a ton. Yep. So the eels are here. What happens next? Well, now that we've collected them and brought them above the dam, we're going to let them go in this spot here, and they will start migrating upstream throughout the entire watershed. Next part of their journey. Yeah. So how far would they travel? Well, they're going to travel throughout the entire uh, Susquehanna River watershed, uh, as far up as Binghamton, New York, which is wow. hundreds of miles. Oh will they ever come back here? They will. They're going to spend five to 12 years in the watershed, and then once they reach maturity, they're going to start migrating back downstream and eventually make their way back to the Sargasso Sea where they were born. They're going all the way back to Sargasso Sea? Who knew? <laughs> it's just a known fact. They're going to travel almost 1,500 miles to get back to their home where they were born in the Sargasso Sea. So what's the importance of transporting these eels over the dam? 
Well, they were a historic part of the ecosystem. They made up almost a quarter of the biomass throughout the river shed. They are important predators for small fish and crayfish, but they're also extremely important prey species for the larger species. What type of species are we talking about here? Almost anything bigger than the eel likes to eat eels. So we're talking about some important sport fish like largemouth and smallmouth bass, uh, channel catfish, and striped bass, all of them. So do the eels play any other important role in their ecosystem? Well, another important role that the eels play is that they play host to larval mussels that will attach themselves to the eel's gills and hitch a ride throughout the watershed. And then those mussels do something important for the water too? They certainly do. Uh, mussels, clams, bivalves in general will start filtering the water and they improve water quality. So that wouldn't happen without the eels? Absolutely. So how long has this program been in operation? We've been stocking eels since about 2008. Wow. So since that time, have you seen any signs that this project is working? We have. They've been dispersing throughout the watershed. All right, I think it's time to get these guys in the water. Okay, Chris, what's the next leg of the journey? Well, usually we hook this hose up to the tank here and let them go for a little ride. But since we have the extra help, we were thinking you guys could help us release them today. Great, you guys want to help release some eels? Hey, that's great. Awesome, I'd love to. Chris, can you show us how you normally release them? Absolutely, we'll get the hose hooked up and send them for a ride. All right, that was fantastic. Do we get them all or are there some stragglers? There's a few stragglers, we're gonna flush them out and then we're all set. Okay. Awesome. Right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it was great having you out here. Yeah, thank you for having us. Oh, hi. I'm so glad you're here. You know, it always excites me to meet young people who love to protect the earth as much as I do. Young people who are pioneering powerful ways to conserve and protect our planet for all of us. I call them Eco Defenders. Let's find out what they're up to. Hi, I'm Selena from AquaKids and this is Eco Defenders. On this segment, we'll be talking to remarkable youth all around the globe about amazing things they're doing to keep it green and blue. Today I'm here with Rose Aquino from the Haiti Ocean Project and we're going to find out what they've been up to. Hi Rose. Hello. Can you tell me a little bit about your project? Um, Haiti Ocean Project is a nonprofit organization. It teaches the kids in Haiti about the ocean and protects the whales and dolphins. What are the goals of your organization? We have a few goals. One is to establish a marine education in Haiti. Two is to build a um, marine conservation education center. Three is to create a marine mammal sighting network. And four is to develop whale and dolphin watching. Why is your project so important? Um, many kids in Haiti, they live near the ocean and they're all always around at 24-7, but they have absolutely no education about it. So um, it's important for the kids in Haiti because it, the ocean is a way to make money for them and provide food for them. The kids we teach in Haiti are very excited. Um, they want to spend as much time as they can learning about the ocean and going to see the dolphins and whales. Um, we actually have two boats in Haiti and the kids, they are, we try to take them out as, as much as possible because they always want to go out and see the whales. <laughs> After starting this project in Haiti, the kids show more interest in protecting the ocean and its environment and they starting to do like cleanups and all sorts of things. Why do you feel that it's so important that children know about marine wildlife around the globe? It's important because when the animals are gone, they're gone. So we are trying to do everything we can to protect them. But you're never too young to make a difference. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. We learned a whole bunch of information. This is Rose Aquino from the Haiti Ocean Project. You're now watching Aqua Kids. Wasn't that amazing? Okay, now it's your turn. If you or someone you know is doing something remarkable to help our planet, let us know about it and you could be our next eco defender.
I gotta go. Aqua Kids will be right back. Hi, Drew here. Join to Aqua Kids next week to find out how a river herring population is doing in Maryland's Patapsco River. I'm Jalen, and this is Earth Edition. The American Eel Restoration Project in the Susquehanna River is one part of the many important programs connected to President Obama's executive order to accelerate cleanup and preservation of the Chesapeake Bay. The bay has the nation's largest estuary and has tremendous value to the region and its citizens. The President's executive order includes restoring clean water, recovering habitat, sustaining fish and wildlife, conserving land, and increasing public access. The Chesapeake Bay Protection and Restoration Executive Order represents a partnership between the government and the citizens as they work to solve critical challenges facing the Chesapeake Bay. I'm Jalen, and this has been Earth Edition. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Getting kids excited about projects like this is the first and most important step in protecting and understanding these resources. The kids are the future in keeping our environment safe. Hey, it was really great having Aqua Kids here today learning about our eel project. I hope that you guys get a chance to check out U.S. Fish and Wildlife's website. We have a lot of great projects across the nation. So what did we learn today about the eels? Well, eels are a very important species of fish. And they make an incredibly long journey during their lifetime. They're helped by people. And most importantly, the program to save them is working. Remember, it's up to you to keep it green and blue. Help protect our planet, and we'll see you next time on Aqua Kids. Bye! Awesome! Looks like we have enough time to premiere my band, The Hollow Party's brand new music video, Basic Girl. Let's go to it! And now, the only man that uses mayonnaise is Rogan, your host, Bert Filamino! No, stop! Oh, you are much too kind. Oh, thank you, thank you. And welcome to tonight's episode of Dream Date. So let's get right to it and introduce tonight's bachelors, the charming, the handsome, the hollow party! Come on out! All right, let's introduce our lovely contestants for tonight. Come on out, ladies. Just don't care, I don't notice what you wear Cause your eyes have got me locked in stare There's no need to hide You're beautiful inside A simple girl is hard to find But so much more than meets the eye I'm... Give me a basic girl Don't make it complicated That you're a dime I suck and you don't mind You make me wanna try You're so cool, I don't know why But all that counts is you and I I'm... Give me a basic girl Don't make it complicated
It's great working with Aqua Kids. Their mission's a lot like ours. 